This is a tool to teach healthcare providers how to effectively work with diverse deaf patients via a series of clinical scenarios and narration by deaf professionals. The clinical scenarios were designed based on real life experiences of deaf people in the healthcare system and incorporate sensitive content, including experiences of language deprivation, disempowerment, oppression, and trauma. Viewer discretion advised. Thank you, Ruby. It will call you shortly. Where? Oh, you can take a seat right over there. Oh, you're asking about the sign language interpreter. Video interpreter. Look. No Ruby here today? Okay. Chris? The patient's deaf. We called 911 through the texting app. I couldn't ask the appropriate questions in the ambulance, but he's obviously suffering from severe chest pain and he's in distress. Uh. I feel bad. He keeps signing stuff. We just don't know what he's saying. Got it. Thanks, guys. Let's get that interpreter thing. On it. Uh, where was that video interpreter thing? I thought it lived in this room. Ultrasound borrowed it yesterday. I guess they never brought it back. Uh. Can you tell me what happened? Is there pen and paper around here? Yep, I got it. Here you go. I found it. Someone left it in the hallway. And we have power. Where's the menu on this thing? Oh, there it is. Yes, soon, soon. Um, oh, let's get some pain meds on board, there. please. Oh man, this thing is slow. <sighs> Hello. Are you prepared to work with a variety of deaf patients? For this training, we use the term deaf in an all-inclusive way to denote people with hearing loss who identify as culturally deaf, audiologically deaf, deaf-blind, deaf-disabled, hard of hearing, late-deafened, and hearing-impaired. Please keep in mind, an identity label that one person chooses may be perceived as harmful by another person. Never impose an identity label without the patient's consent. Deaf people also have identities that intersect with their hearing status, including race, ethnicity, nationality, gender identity, sexual orientation, and disability status. This video will teach you essential information about deaf people, how to identify appropriate communication methods for working with diverse deaf patients, and how to effectively obtain and apply these communication approaches. 
deaf people are born into a wide range of backgrounds and linguistic experiences. Differences in family composition, medical approaches, and educational placements will result in complex deaf identities. Ask your patients how they identify and respect the ways in which they describe themselves. Here in the U.S., many states have early hearing detection and intervention laws, so most children born with hearing loss are identified by a few months old. Some doctors offer parents information about American Sign Language, ASL, but many only focus on hearing rehabilitation and spoken language development. Because of this, 80% of deaf children in the developed world receive cochlear implants. However, depending on the individual, cochlear implants may or may not provide good access to speech. Their effectiveness also varies based on noise in the environment and the stress level of the situation. More than 90% of deaf children are born to parents who hear and use spoken language, referred to as hearing by the deaf community. Most hearing parents do not become fluent in ASL and cannot fully communicate with their children in sign language. Because of this, many deaf people don't learn ASL until later in life. When they reach school age, deaf students may attend deaf residential schools, deaf day schools, hearing schools with a deaf classroom, or hearing schools without deaf peers. Regardless of educational setting, many deaf children spend time catching up on fundamental common knowledge because they have not had the auditory access to learn by overhearing their caregivers as hearing children do. Birth to age five is a critical period of language acquisition. Because of systemic medical, cultural, and educational biases, deaf children disproportionately miss out on accessible language input during this time. The result is language deprivation syndrome, a range of lifelong challenges in linguistic, cognitive, and emotional development. For example, because of inadequate exposure to a first language, a deaf child might start kindergarten with only basic vocabulary and struggle to express themselves for the rest of their life. As a healthcare provider, you may have opportunities to prevent language deprivation by prioritizing deaf children's needs for fully accessible communication. You may also interact with deaf adults who have been impacted by language deprivation. However, be careful not to assume that deaf adults are language deprived if they use another sign language or dialect, especially if they recently immigrated to the United States. Hey, perdão. O tráfico estava horrível. Obrigado. Obrigado, Rita. Cousin. Cousin, hi. Hi, nice to meet you. I can help you with the interpreting. Hello, Rita. I'm Dr. Suarez. Very nice to meet you. Hello. And who did you bring with you today? Hi, I'm Gabriel Harkolzen. Oh, uh, very nice to meet you, Gabriel. Nice to meet uh, you. Rita, um, you're here for your first colonoscopy today? I think she is. Did she receive the information packet on how to prepare for the procedure? She was supposed to drink a gallon of laxative and not eat anything after midnight. Um, not sure. Oh, Rita, você bebeu o galão de remédio ontem à noite? Bebeu o galão?
Unfortunately, I'm unable to establish communication with the patient. Um, Rita's from Brazil and uses Brazilian sign language. I didn't know that when I took this assignment. I work in ASL and English. It really would be best to reschedule this. Okay, uh, Rita, what accommodations do you typically use for making appointments? Well, the last time we went to a doctor, we have two interpreters. One was a deaf that knows the Brazilian Sign Language and American Sign Language, and the other one knows the American Sign Language and can also hear and speak English. I'll get your office the number to call to assemble the appropriate team. Okay, uh, we will make that happen. Rita, I want to make sure that you understand what a colonoscopy entails and can fully consent to the procedure. Rita, eu acho que você vai ter que trazer o intérprete surdo aqui. She's saying, um, I, I get it, I'll, I'll see you next time. Expectations and preferences for family member involvement in medical care may vary based on culture. When a family member or support person is present, check with the patient to make sure they want them to be part of the encounter. If the patient consents to others being present, establish communication procedures and clarify each person's role. Include the patient in all discussions. Any collateral information should be confirmed with the patient. Sometimes, the presence of others in a clinical interaction can be disempowering. If the other person consistently takes charge, it can decrease the patient's sense of agency, contribute to deficits in health literacy, and result in poor understanding of their personal health history. Hello, Marcus. This must be your mom. Yes, yes, I'm his mom. I'm Gloria. Marcus, I see from your chart here that you're hearing impaired. I'm hard of hearing, not impaired. I'm, I'm sorry, hard of hearing, okay. Um, can you hear me okay? Marcus, Marcus, look, look at the counselor. Can you hear her? Please do not give her a hard time to can you see what I'm dealing with? <sighs> Marcus, I know that this is difficult for you, and I don't want to proceed unless I know that we both understand each other. All you have to do is speak clearly, and he can read your lips. Oh my gosh. Marcus? Is there anything I can do to improve communication? Historically, the healthcare system has not been an accessible space for deaf, deaf-blind, and hard-of-hearing patients. While experiences vary, it is common for patients to experience poor language access, communication trauma, oppression, and lack of opportunity to be equal partners in their care. Deaf patients are linguistically diverse. Ask what their communication preferences and needs are instead of making assumptions. For example, asking a deaf person, can you lip read, is a loaded question. Skilled lip readers only understand about 30% of the intended message, and the task of lip reading requires significant cognitive burden. Deaf sighted people rely on visual information to understand their surroundings. Deaf blind people rely on tactile information. Calling our name or knocking on a door doesn't work for us. In a waiting room, ensure that administrative staff have a system in place for communicating that a deaf patient is in the waiting room and needs a visual notification, or a deafblind patient needs a tactile notification. Repeated negative experiences like these lead many patients to mistrust doctors and avoid seeking preventative health care. For these reasons, Health problems may accumulate over time, contributing to substantial health disparities 
compared to the general population. Hello, Ruby. And this must be Ray. Hello, doctor. Yes, this is my husband, Ray. He's deafblind. Oh. And this is Ray saying, hello, doc. Nice to meet you. Likewise. So, Ruby, what brings you in today? Well, I'm here today because I have a question regarding my I'm sorry, uh, the sound cut out. You have a question about what? I have a question regarding my medication. And this is Ray saying, Ruby, why don't you show him the pill organizer? And Ruby's saying, okay, you're right, I will. Oh, the medication is making you dizzy. Is that, does that mean dizzy? This is the interpreter speaking. I actually can't see the patient. Would you mind asking her to be in front of the camera? Oh, Ruby, yeah. That's right. Okay. Uh, oh, apparently we're taking two warfarin on some days where you should be taking one. I'm gonna put this over here and this should be there and the rest look good to me what color pill the orange the orange pill but they all look the same to me <laughs> i don't understand oh this is so frustrating and ray saying what's going on and this is ruby saying i'm sorry this is not working we're having a communication breakdown well uh-huh the video remote interpreter doesn't understand what's happening in the room she can't see what's happening I and see. i can't understand what you're trying to tell me <laughs> we need in-person interpreters that's our legal rights uh, come on ray let's go uh, can, uh, <sighs> under federal civil rights law Deaf people have the right to health care access. These rights extend to covered public and private entities, including hospitals, doctor's offices, clinics, psychologists, dentists, chiropractors, nursing homes, and pharmacies. There are a variety of accommodations for deaf patients to access health care. Just ask the patient, what are your communication needs? Here are the most commonly used approaches. So how did the prep go last night, Rita? Some deaf people use ASL, so you will need to provide a hearing ASL interpreter. ASL involves the hands, face, and space, and is grammatically distinct from spoken English. Some clinical encounters may require a qualified deaf interpreter in addition to an ASL interpreter. Deaf interpreters are frequently used with patients who have been impacted by language deprivation, those who are not fluent in ASL, those who are deafblind, those who have other disabilities, and deaf children. Additionally, some patients may feel more comfortable and have a greater trust in healthcare professionals when a deaf interpreter is present. A deaf interpreter is trained to work as a team with a hearing ASL interpreter. They bring expertise and lived experience as a deaf person to the interpretation. Yes, I did it all, and it is definitely not my idea of a good night. <laughs> You've got that right. <laughs> they are cultural and linguistic specialists who use communication strategies that go beyond formal language, leveraging non-linguistic strategies to optimize communication access. Uh, it says it's connecting. Hi, I'm interpreter number 3636. And we have contact. Can you hear me, interpreter? If you could, please speak up a little bit louder and more clearly. <clears throat> is this better? One moment. The patient is saying, I can't see. I have limited vision. I need a deaf interpreter. 
a tactile interpreter. I want an interpreter in person, not a video remote interpreter. Each patient has different ways of communicating. This may mean that an ASL interpreter is not the right or only route to effective communication. It may also mean that an in-person interpreter is necessary, as opposed to video remote interpreting, also called VRI. In general, VRI is considered appropriate only for emergency situations. Temporary use until an in-person interpreter becomes available or if the patient specifically requests VRI. Some deaf, deaf-blind, and hard-of-hearing people communicate through written English, in which case you can arrange for Communication Access Real-Time Translation, or CART, services. When possible, prepare in advance for your appointment by asking the patient about their communication needs. For scheduling purposes, keep in mind that an interpreted interaction may take one and a half to two times longer than an interaction without an interpreter. If a deaf patient arrives in your setting and accommodations have not been arranged in advance, writing back and forth may not be the best strategy. For many deaf people, sign language is their preferred method of communication, and they may not fully understand written English. Written English should only be used if it is specifically requested by the deaf patient. Marcus, is there anything I can do to improve communication? Well, the channel auto caption on. Was that good? Oh. You close the blind behind you, it's too bright. Sure. Marcus, thank you for your patience, and I am so sorry for not arranging accommodations before today's appointment. Just let me know what you need, and we'll reschedule as soon as possible, okay? Well, you can hire a remote caption. It's called CART, C-A-R-T. CART. Okay. In the meantime, I'm going to give you the text number for the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. It's something I give all my clients to have them save in their phone, okay? Thank you. If you need to obtain accommodations, Start the process early to avoid delaying the appointment. Each healthcare system is different and may have their own procedures. If you work at a large hospital or medical center, there is likely an interpreter services department or language department that arranges medical interpreting and translation for various spoken languages and ASL. Additionally, there may be an ADA or accessibility office that works to meet the access needs of patients with disabilities. Hospital interpreting services. Hi, uh, yes, we have a patient in the ER who's deaf and he's also low vision. He's requesting a deaf interpreter. A tactile interpreter, do we know what that is? I sure do, I'm on it. Okay, good. Oh, and he wants an in-person interpreter, not video remote interpreter. Okay, sure thing. Okay, great, thank you. If you work at a clinic or hospital without an interpreting department or accessibility office, you or your office staff will need to request an interpreter or CART provider directly through an interpreting agency. Ask the deaf patient if they have a preferred agency, interpreter referral service, or preferred medical interpreters. Do your best to accommodate their preferences. If the patient does not have such preferences, you can use www.rid.org to search for certified ASL interpreters, deaf interpreters, and interpreting agencies in your state. 
A general online search for interpreting agencies in your state may also be helpful. Health outcomes are directly influenced by the quality of interpreters you hire. A qualified interpreter will possess specialized vocabulary and content-specific knowledge relevant to the setting in which they are interpreting, in this case, a medical setting. An interpreter certification can also be confirmed through the RID website. Hello, Ruby. Nice to see you again. Good morning. I'm glad to see on-site interpreters with us today. How wonderful. Once you obtain high-quality accommodations, here is some guidance to help you work efficiently as a team with the interpreters and your patient. Rita, is this new communications team working for you? Look at and address the patient directly, not the interpreter. For interpreted interactions, keep in mind that there may be lags in response time as the communicated message moves from you to the interpreters to the patient and back. Yes, I understand perfectly. Thank you. Give sufficient time for the interpreter and patient to decide where to stand or sit during the assignment. The patient's asking her to move a little bit closer, or no, a little bit closer to the bed. They will make sure the lighting is appropriate and the room is arranged to allow the patient to see the interpreter clearly. And now he's asking about me if I'm in the right position. He's checking to make sure we're in a good place. And now, okay, great. Let's go ahead. Before you start, explain how the appointment will proceed. I will be weighing you, checking your blood pressure, and checking your blood oxygen levels. And then the doctor will be in to see you. Describe what you are doing before and after each procedure okay. to Thank keep you. the patient fully informed. Provide adequate time for the patient to ask questions. Then, use the teach-back method to check for full comprehension. We did it! <laughs> use visual aids and tangible models to further support understanding as needed. See, it's not a heart attack. Mm. Oh, what a relief. After the appointment, check in with the patient. Good afternoon. I have connected your call and the line is ringing. I'll let you know as soon as someone answers. Thank you. Office staff should either message the patient through the online patient portal or call the patient directly to ask if they would like to Hello. work with the same this interpreter again. Hello, Ruby. This is Sasha calling from Dr. Robin's office. I just wanted to check in with you and see how your recent visit went. The patient may have feedback about the interpreter's qualifications, which should be communicated back to the referral agency. Hello. It went really well. I wanted to thank you for hiring qualified interpreters for me and my husband. I really appreciate that. Hi, Marcus. Again, I'm so sorry about our last appointment, but I did get a remote cart provider for today, so hopefully things will go much better this time. Oh, I can stick around to help. I got this. I got this. Oh, uh, okay. Fine. Bye. Thank you, Gloria. So, how are you feeling today? It's all right. It is possible to achieve high quality, accessible health care with a variety of deaf patients. Just remember these three key points. Ask, don't assume. Be flexible to meet patients' needs. And work as a team with deaf patients and community partners. Build partnerships with deaf-led organizations in your area to ensure that your healthcare setting is prepared for deaf patients' diverse language and communication needs. These collaborations can go a long way towards fostering trust and effective care with deaf patients. 
Now you know how to work effectively with deaf patients. It may seem daunting at first, but like with any new skill, the more often you practice, the easier it becomes. Thank, Thank you. you.